Uh, call to order. Uh, it is now 6.39 p.m. Welcome to the September 25th, 2024 regular meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission. This is a hybrid meeting with commissioners, city staff, and members of the public participating in the Recreation Center in accordance with public health guidelines for in-person meetings and members of the public participating remotely. Um, I would like to introduce the commissioners and staff present. Uh, Commissioner Kevin Dawkins, Commissioner Joseph Grass, myself, Vice Chair Bonham Lee, Mr. Mayor Justin Van Buren. Staff present includes uh, Library and Community Services Director Sean Reinhardt, Library and Community Services Assistant Director Nick Scheida, Library and Community Services Supervisor Patricia Mullen, Management Analyst Ashley Walker, and Public Works Supervisor Parks Doug Monteros. Ashley will be helping facilitate the meeting. Ashley, will you please take a moment to provide introduction, uh, instructions to the Commission and members of the public on how the meeting will proceed? Thank you, Derek. For members of the public who are attending this meeting virtually and wish to provide an opportunity to chair calls to public comment on the item you wish to speak on, please engage the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen. For those who are calling in from a landline or cell phone, please press star 9 to raise your virtual hand. For members of the public attending in person, there are student cards available on the table. Please complete one and turn it into staff before public comment is called. If there are a large number of public commenters, the time limit may be adjusted by the chair in order to allow everyone a chance to comment. When your turn for public comments arrives, staff will unmute you. With that, we we'll turn the meeting to the chair. Under public comment, the public may address the commission on any subject not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the commission once under public comment for three minutes. Please clearly state your name and address political jurisdiction in which you live. The Commission cannot act on items not listed on the agenda, or the Commission cannot respond to non-agenda issues for comment other than to provide general information. Nick, do we have any public comments? Exactly. This time, if you'd like to make a public comment on any item not listed on the agenda, please press star 9. Please notify the staff liaison by using your right hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're dialing in, you can use star to engage the right hand function. There are no okay. We will then begin tonight with item D1, update on the parks policy. Staff will make a presentation to begin the session. Ashley, do we have any public comment on this item? At this time, if you'd like to make a public comment to the item, please bring the comment part forward. If you're on Zoom, please notify the staff VA company when you're again featured. If you're on the Zoom screen, if you're dialing in, you can use star right to engage your exam option. There are no uh, Thank you. With that, public comment is closed, and we will open the item for commission discussion. Let's have the presentation. Here we go. Yeah. So joining us tonight is Doug Montrose, a uh, park in charge of the park station, and uh, is speaking about parks and uh, enforcing policy. Welcome, Doug. Thank you. Um, you guys like the next. She's got a good lady here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, so this email is a library of amenities for uh, use from sports, turf fields, various play structures, skate parks, and mixed use open spaces. One of our main priorities is maintaining these spaces for all user groups and ensure a safe and sustainable environment. For years to come. Part of the challenge is creating a, is creating a space for all of our user groups, especially our residents who have pets. Uh, Willow Oaks Dog Park recently opened, uh, renovated with just over 20,000 square feet of enclosed secure safe space, dedicated water sources, 
for dogs, uh, it's completely fenced in for safety, features an astroturf uh, surface, seating for users, and uh, city provided dog waste bags and plenty more. Uh, some of our main challenges in this particular location include users tend to neglect cleaning up after their pets, um, keeping the turf clean and sanitized, against time frame, and of course, you know, dog population in non designated areas. We want dog park. Okay, featuring a 63,000 square foot open space, completely enclosed for safety, early access to users, and city provided, city provided dog ways and facts. Challenges of this park at this location uh, usually neglect cleaning up after their pets. Dogs tend to dig holes in the turf, dogs dig up the irrigation heads. Um, designated space uh, is actually a baseball field. Um, negatively impacts primary users. Costs for repairs uh, and renovations. Users accessing space after designated hours. Health and safety concerns. Dog population in non designated areas, especially when this space closed. Some of the solutions and ideas that we come up with education and awareness. You know, I'm actually in stand <laughs> So, so, uh, so education and awareness, uh, launch of public awareness campaigns about uh, leash laws and uh, pet waste responsibilities, distribute information signage in key areas about the environmental and safety impacts of non-compliance, partnering with local veterinarians, pet stores, and animal organizations to promote responsible pet ownership. Uh, enforcement and monitoring. Some of those ideas in include increased patrolling and enforcement in high traffic areas, compliance with off leash and uh, implementing fines or penalties for non compliant owners to deter repetitive <laughs> violations. Thank you. Repeated violations. Uh, recruit volunteers for an adoptive park program to help maintain pet waste. Stations ensure that they are well stocked clean. Uh, infrastructure and amenities encourage users to take advantage of designated areas um, within our city. Install more pet waste stations. Relocate users um, taking advantage of mixed use spaces to a designated space within this to eliminate unintended consequences. There we go. Thank you. So this is. Uh... KCT Park is um, an app that uh, citizens can use to report issues, including park issues, directly through their phone. And then it gets sorted out to the different responsible city staff members. It also allows you to like, geo tag your submission. So if you see a broken sprinkler, you can take a picture of it and submit it through. Uh, ACT Memo Park and Gene that geolocates it for the staff. Other uh, than you can follow certain topics for certain areas. So, interested, say, in playgrounds, baseball fields, you can follow topics, follow those topics in your so line out it. It's for you for if you're particularly interested in like illegal dumping rules. Follow those sorts of things. You can keep track of them. On the staff end, it's um, very helpful for us to have that sort of um, direct, uh, uh, sort of more direct contact with uh, people who are reporting problems. It also uh, eliminates some of the folks getting frustrated trying to navigate a phone tree or something, mm -hmm. which is the easiest thing to do. Um, make sure that we have a record of those issues. Sure, so this um, item was brought to the commission tonight 
because it was uh, there was questions about enforcement specific to dog parks that kind of, uh, that came during uh, the previous PRC meeting. So we wanted to make sure one that we did kind of acknowledge what the what was available in kind of um, for the city's process to support um, any issues. And then, you know, to have Doug here to answer any questions and, and see if there's anything further. Okay. Uh, Ashley, do we have any public comment on this item? At this time, if you'd like to make a public comment on this item, please bring a comment card. If you're on Zoom, please notify the staff liaison by using the red band feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're dialing in, you can use star mic to engage the red band function. No public comment. Uh, thank you for that public comment is closed, and we will open the item for discussion. Anyone? Yeah. Are they hoping? I mean, some of the solutions that you have to bring hoping for feedback on that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we yeah. hear what you have to say. Getting <laughs> <laughs> all ideas on the side of Brainstorm internally would be great. Yeah, and maybe it's helpful. I think the uh, we as a commission we talked about this issue um, a couple months ago. I, I think it was around the time when you gave your last presentation. Um, so uh, we were talking about dogs in particular, about waste pickup does occur in the commission. Our chair Peter Dacko made a comment about that specifically. But uh, I know, at least in, in my immediate neighborhood, parks are mm -hmm. not only dog waste, but um, the, the dogs using the children's playground and damaging equipment, in particular, the swing sets. The dog would use the, the seats of the shoe toy. So the park didn't have, like, you know, toddler swing sets. Swing seats for a couple months actually. They were just replaced. So it is unfortunate. Um, I don't know. I'm wondering if there are signs up saying, hey, you shouldn't play golf. You shouldn't um, do drugs. We, we were unsure about the mechanism was to kind of prevent these behaviors that they do. So at least like, it seemed like there's some suggestions here. But I'm so curious. What is who, who who's going to great question? And I, I can totally understand some of the challenges, uh, not only with dogs, but with you know other things that are happening in spaces. I think, first and foremost, it's important to mention that as, as residents, if we do witness something, um, a publication. Always reach out to uh, PD or government enforcement, uh, at least to start that channel of logging those logging that you know um, issue that you're observing, whether dogs in parks, people drinking in parks, things of that sort. Especially if it's after hours, uh, and that information generally gets shared with parks because then we have a great way to communicate and track those things, and then we can kind of develop these ideas around how to address. In terms of enforcement in the here and now, when those things are occurring and we have to be there, uh, I try to do my best to approach, you know, residents or users when they have the dogs on leash. I always try to, you know, politely remind them, please keep your dog on a leash. You know, we have leash rules and it's not like your dog safety, but it's just to the rest of the public. Uh, and that kind of the people are pretty responsive to it. And, just have to remember that be polite and be cordial. Um, but yeah, as we see this happen more and more, affecting other users and parks and finding damage and costs involved in repair and donating, placing swings and things like that. I think, you know, having those suggestions of how do we go about enforcement? More probably, who would be enforcing? So, yeah.
one thing I want to mention is that the act again works really well, but not a lot of people are quick to mm -hmm. it would be helpful to just post at so many locations just um, use the act app. Because I, I see it works, you know, I get the emails from it. People report all kinds of problems and like, you know, somebody was complaining about seeing some homeless people, right, whatever, but it was said to the middle part police. So I mean people monitor it and if somebody has a problem, people might feel reluctant to call cops, but they might use the act to just start reporting Since then, actually, there was a giant tree branch that the gentleman was gone. I Capability and, and really kind of gearing them more towards the primary user. But we also need to be mindful of the dog computers. We don't want it to feel like a different grade, we want it to feel the upgrade. Like, hey, we, we, we're, we're choosing these options for you to use solely uh, for your usership. Uh, whereas, you know, Neon is such a big space, Bird is, again. You know, wide open space where you're you're walking around, you know, you're not really familiar with it. You would just think that it's a giant field. That the pavement is a great opportunity to have more space geared towards dogs. Um, so we are looking at all the options to, to design and to be together in your plan. But again, it's a process to be to investigate what's going to be the best. <laughs> and then I know uh, one of the challenges was people accessing dog parts. Is there a space for the parts? Yeah, so uh, great question. Um, so, like, Will of Oaks, for example, it's 24 hours. However, it's not well lit. You know, the dog parts. Running from, you know, but it is available. That's the point. These spaces are designed to be 
anything for the funnel to use at leisure. Um, the only space that we have uh, under kind of walking team as it were is, is really a lot. And that's really just due to managing the time slots that users have at a specific time to gain access, use, and move on or the, the specific obstacle opportunity rather that we see at Neon is over the course of many years, users have kind of understood how the game works and know how to you know access keys or know someone that has keys or had keys and you know makes friends with baseball league people or makes friends with this certain individual. So we, we ended up with this kind of meritage of is there a window for the market for the market access? Is there not? Um, but we have, we, I have done my best to meet those people and, and um, post new signage and come up with ways to communicate to those users that you know, here's our start time, here's our end time, here's our maintenance window and clean so that we can clean and sanitize the time needed so the baseball teams come in there. I for example, we have a movie and softball, and our is open. And so I mean, it's, it's, it's a schedule. It's just educating everyone and, and getting everyone's body on that schedule. And then, you know, to some degree or another, holding each user with one. Okay. This is the time. You know, this is important. Thank you so much. And just to uh, go back to dog parks and specific use for dog parks, that would be something that we um, would bring back up in a conversation about the parks and facilities. So we're looking at that as a recreation and opportunities. The other thing in response to the issue of the earth is a question about the use of the floor. The spring development inside of it. Um, so that's a private development. They didn't have to build a dog park, but they did it as a public amenity. Um, the city does have discussions with developers about building public amenities, not in every development, but in some developments. Um, so there are opportunities as more developments as for them. There's competing demands for. Some of the unsexy infrastructure things like improved sewer lines and traffic lanes and traffic timing and things like that are super important, but not something that they put at the top of their list to improve. But it is something that could come up in discussions. And so, how do those amenities rise to the top? I think it rise to the top by people talking to the city council and saying, hey, this is an important thing, we'd like to see more dog parks. Um, if, if it becomes part of the update or an amendment or part of the discussion around the facilities master plan, like that's another way that the parks can create an additional concern for the profile issue. I guess the more uh, immediate thing that might not be is the, the song or pet West. Please stations, I assume that's the back thing. Yeah. Um, is that something that can be done sooner than later? Oh, that's a good Keep it that There's some excitement to there. Oh. Please submit a request for ACT and we'll be happy to trip you up. That's another side of the local record. ACT isn't just about filing a plan for. You know, right? It's, it, you can make recommendations. Hey, I've noticed that. My idea is not, is this an option? Are more way stations available? You know, and that's, that's a great outlook. And they pointed out that as user demand increases, the, the profile increases, and we start thinking about where we need to do these things and how do we prioritize them up the chain on the list. Um, communications, dispensers are. Easy to, to install. Um, I think right now each, so like in a row, for example, there's one with gloves, one with bags, there's your duty bag um, that users have access to. Um, 
be on the same same type of percent. So maybe installing them in other areas that don't also impede with the other user groups, especially in an excuse location, uh, is definitely something we can do like in the immediate uh, for the most part. And that might help for some of those other issues that we do. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm a it seems like having one in every part makes sense. Maybe I'll go home and sit there. I mean, yeah, that's a good idea. I think that, yes, um, I would also, also maybe think of one line of the if we were to install these, we're going to let all of our facilities were made of dog, um, and make it available. I think we want to make sure that we have a good foundation of policy and practice before we start maybe putting these things out available because we don't want to say we don't want to make a issue. We want to make sure that you make these things available for users that they're going to be Policy code and what we're supposed to do. I mean, and again, it's, it's, it's a pretty simple thing for us to start to solve. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the current condition is some people just don't use bags and think that's okay. So maybe seeing the what way station would be an indicator of, hey, you're supposed to. Sure. Speaking to the society issue, I know we have. So when I walk into the streets, there's a sign in this end of the park that's for the park rules. Parks are open dawn dusk. Dogs must be kept on the leash. I'm not sure if that's on the other side of the park too, or like you know. So there are things that we could do to sort of look at um, the sign, the existing signage in the parks, and see. I think the signage. It's kind of weird. Who's responsible for the signage in the city, right? Is it is it the parks department? Is it the the folks who are setting the policies for the parks? So we, we need to have maybe that discussion. Maybe that's the, the staff can do offline and then back. Yeah, we did a survey of the signs for the parks, and here's the ones that need signs, or maybe we think they need signs. Well, I mean, we can send people out. So, yeah, I mean, the other the, the other thing that came to mind when when going into this problem too was was having um you know receptacles that have the little button shaped uh, on the leash that have bags in them. So you know, you are servicing parks. We can encourage users that are walking their dogs. Hey, you know, I can grab one of these and you know, that attach it to your leash. It's just a fun way to get with that person, but then also Give them a piece of, you know, a minor, or also maybe a two yeah, something. We could city brand. Yeah, you know, it's a city of Miles Park. It make it interactive. Yeah, <laughs> make it interactive. And it's a good way to make it. And um, I guess moving on. Regular business. Um, next item is E1. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item is E1, approving minutes from the August 28, 20, 2024 meeting. Uh, Ashley, do we have any public comment on this item? At this time, if you'd like to make a public comment on this item, please bring a comment card forward. If you're on Zoom, please notify the staff that it is on by using the right hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're dialing in, you can use star line to engage the right hand motion. We have no comment. Uh, would our commission member like to make a motion to approve the minutes? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Okay, okay. So that was congrats. Motion and dog in She's all over. Yes, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go to the roll call. 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 Go to the ro
Commissioner Grass? Yes. Commissioner, oh, sorry, Vice Chairman? Yes. Commissioner Sherman? Yes. And Commissioner Van Yes. The motion passed. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to item F1, draft water user survey. Staff will make a presentation to the case. Thank you, Mr. So tonight we're looking for review and comment on the draft products user survey. Um, a little bit of background, the city has two product facilities, both Burgess and Valley and Pools. Um, and those pools are operated by a partner um, of the city, then the support by a contract. Um, and the contract stipulates that the city will administer an annual resident satisfaction survey. The most recent survey was conducted in 2023, and there it included demographics questions, questions referencing engagement and satisfaction with the products program, and then some, some open-ended questions. We did receive about 196 responses to that survey, so really well responded. Um, the draft survey is attached A in your packet. Are we able to pull that up? Thank you, Ashley. Um, but just in general, the additions to last year's um, or adjustments to last year's survey include um, questions for Bellevue and Pool and the satisfaction in reference to that pool. And then um, we've included the ability for comments to be received about regarding any additional possible in the process. Mm -hmm. So it is tentative, ten, let's see, we'll, we'll administer the um, survey in October 2024 and tentatively bring it back to the FC in November. So it asks if there's a question about, you know, where and what neighborhood uh, the respondent lives in, how many years they've been living there, what age groups are in their hospital, and then um, in general, how often they frequent the pools, both so Haven and Burgess. And then um, number seven on the draft survey are any available programs for the park. You know, what, what program is important? It's just a lot of valuable information and work on and satisfied. The respondent is um, in the Bellhaven pool and works for the draft survey. So that you can take questions. Uh, two questions. Number one how, is this how is it sent out, sent out to people that is it like blasted to people that sign up for the swimming program or is it on the website right now? So it's done through our input. Program and it goes to everyone that's subscribed to the okay. um, I don't have a number here, uh, but it's time to watch the And we also had some paper um, surveys that pulled the front pictures here on the number Okay. And then my other question was this looks great. It looks, it's very geared for the programs. We want to ask about like facilities that people have, like locker rooms or shower, like as an avid person who will swim Like, do we want to? Asked like locker rooms and stuff. Or? So, in comparison to last year, we did ask, I think we added a few questions. So, um, if you look at that chart, it does reference the, the, the user who one question about the facility. We did acknowledge that the open ended response had a lot to do with the facility. Mm -hmm. So, we added that. Any other feedback on that? So, just swimming pools are state of the art and mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the breakout? Because it's cool. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to be clear, uh, a lot of rooms in particular. It's, um, well, just like, I mean, that's a big part. Like, I mean, if you're going to go swim, like, you know, you want to 
change in shower like being nice space. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a different breakout. There's the swimming pool, mm -hmm. being state of the art and lovely and stuff. Thank you. Uh, uh, one question about um, you know, one category of competitive swim for adults, sports training competitions, training. I'm pretty sure it would include the master swim part, but I'm not sure if you want to break that into the separate. Because people that are in the master's program are not necessarily, most of them don't compete, they just do it as a, I used to be in a swim program. But, um, yeah, I think most of these are very generally stated, so yeah. I think it might be best in, you know, survey to include it in the examples, mm -hmm. if that's what you're yeah. before we can definitely add yeah, in the exactly. masters as one of the examples. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah it tends to be a lot more extra swimmers and gentle talk, you know, not as many people are in the trial. Yeah. Pretty slow on this <laughs> also, just to be clear, so there's um question set, which is on the screen. Midway down, there's competitive swim for adults, and then there's examples, sports training competition triathlon. We could say that comma on that screen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I'm sure that I enjoyed that. Next one. It will be interesting to see. We won't get the full picture of what the value of the new is like. Yeah. Um, we recently had a post Oh, 
um, it was advertised like CUI as opposed to just pool users. I don't have the data in front of me, but one of the questions is like, how far would you visit the pool? And some of the response, I forget how many were like, yeah, I never visited the pool. In reality, so we have a little sense of that. Um, so we can kind of work out on that. Um, we also have we not only posted a, a path to the sites themselves, but like the code is valid and you could cover the survey and just pick up the paper. You know, notices in other facilities like the Swan and the library. Um, so just, just the, that level of coverage seemed good. So that was sort of far. I think we're hoping to get over a thousand responses this time. Um, the uh, uh, the free text feedback actually as valuable as the actual questions. So we hope we get a lot of comments to address a lot of this. These specific comments came and since I've got the floor right now, I'll also mention that on the city manager's office, I was on the shop there. A couple of items of feedback here. Just, just easier for looking on the screen. Well, some smaller things like word changes, word choice that don't substantively change the survey. And um, I did hear that um, one or more city council members, because they, they look at these as well. One of the reasons here is it's out there. And it's, uh, there may be some additional feedback from the city manager's office or the city manager's office to tweak some of these questions. So I um, just, just wanted to make you all aware of that. But between now, all the feedback you're getting, which is going to be incorporated, there could be a few other issues to kind of those channels that we'll, we'll just incorporate because we do want to survey how um, next month we can, because that information is very important for the annual report, which is due in January, to the survey in fall. Sorry, Jack, we're just whispering. Not whispering about. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments on the survey? <laughs> Our next item of regular business is item F2, Library and Commission, Library and Community Services Department updates. Staff will make a brief presentation to begin the session. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, so just a general review of what's been going on in the department. Um, we do have your status uh, statistics for August 2024 in the packet for your review. Um, customer satisfaction surveys, um, another piece of data collection that we have been doing is in reference to like, our graduation sports general. Purposes. Um, we do that on a seasonal basis once time has ended. We've been doing uh, this since summer 2023, and we've had um, 299 customers respond to that general test survey. And this is helpful in just us getting any feedback to help prepare for, you know, better quality of classes, um, supporting our construction strategies and being able to do so, um, and also, you know, identifying what they may want to see more in addition to. Um, tennis court resurfacing, resurfacing, so we have received, um, let's see, we are looking at resurfacing the Burgess Park tennis courts. Uh, we, the, con the city has an on-call contractor for this work, though that contract is available. We are currently working with a different contractor and hoping to get this work done by the Additionally, evaluation of north noise, noise reduction and measure the any line Kelly Park. We have received three competitive quotes ranging from about 29,000 to about 37,000 for materials um, that would potentially reduce the noise of the walkers in the neighborhoods. Um, we are currently going um, to be reaching out to colleagues in the area to find out if they have feedback on what material they have. Um, and we're working directly with them to, to look at those options. Um, and a price that we have mentioned, we did have a price with 
the house. Um, September 5th at Without Haven, there was about 11 attendees. We got some really good feedback, and then we do have the Black Open House coming up tomorrow at 6 p.m. here at the Gymnastics Center. So you are more than welcome to attending. Uh, and yes, the, the yeah. Richard, and because there's the lunch tomorrow night, your client should bring like the result of all that feedback to the commission next month. Feel free to you all. Here. And then uh, finally, for tours, so this is how it with the commission. So, um, this is strategizing, and um, we're planning, we're going to be planning two um, scheduled pathways um, for group tours um, of the three largest city parks Sharon, Elon, and Bedwell, um, or large city parks. And then, if there's interest of, um, from the commission of any self guided tours, we're happy to provide data sheets of. Go out and then the touch of the forecast on the button. Any feedback with Thank you so much. Uh, Ashton, do we have any public comment on this? At this time, if you'd like to make a public comment on this item, please bring a comment forward. If you're on the Zoom, please notify the staff and liaison by using the right hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're dialing in, you can use star line to engage the right hand on the end. No. Thank you. Uh, with that, public comments closed, and we will open the item for the commission session. Okay. I have a question about the um, evaluation of the noise reduction measures. Well, does that include, um, what does that include? Does it include um, screens around the court? And so, um, quiet balls and patterns, or what is that? So, as of yet, we haven't been looking into the noise reduction back. So, it's screen <laughs> on the tennis that's it. So, we have, you know, there is some information on options for equipment, but we haven't ducked into that as much. Well. Okay. Yeah. Um, there haven't been any payment issues or uh, measures done in the past few months, or right? it's still as is. And has there been any additional complaints or feedback from the neighborhood about not in the last few months? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the concerns we heard some months ago from residents it was really specific to the Elon because there are some apartments that are in fairly close proximity to the pickleball courts. And it was specific to pickleball play, which is generally Elon, but really the comments we heard was that the players were sort of continuing past 10 p.m. because there was another ambient light sort of in the area. We're sort of just extending past that hour. One tweak we did make was to have the lights shut off a little bit earlier. I think it's like 9 50, something like that, just to like really kind of emphasize it. I don't know if that correlation is causation, but it did seem like um, there were fewer complaints about like that being more accessible to that. At the same time, too, um, some of the pickleball enthusiasts, um, they were. Very, you know, very engaged in that conversation too, which is great. And um, what I've gathered anecdotally is that they did actually take that feedback from residents to heart, like, oh, hey, we're actually disturbing people. And it does seem like anecdotally there's been a little bit of a kind of self correcting on the parts of the players, and maybe some of them are using some of the lower noise kind of equipment. Yeah. But um, we do have not really problem. Okay. Do we know that some neighboring cities have had success with the noise abatement, or is that theory? Um, there's not a lot of information out there that's really we can go to. to, to did I've been kind of following what's happening in Austin, and um, they surveyed recently they put up the back. There's just so much about noise, but you. So um, that's one thing that I do. We have some potential strategy, but 
better. The one thing that I did talk to Doug about the better speaks to what you know the data and whether or not there's a guarantee. You know, some kind of that data that the nurse need to use. Yeah, this mitigation is interesting science uh, because it's you know it's the, the noise that's affecting someone. Um, in a way, it could be very different. You know, it falls off uh, rhythmically, but also because you can't put a roof over the tennis court, on where the noise just goes up, and then where does that go? Um, and how it's not something that we can necessarily mitigate. So, uh, what happened in To, to mitigate some of the noise, but I'm sure about it's going to be that's why jobs agencies locally, but also Trisha's contacts. See if anybody has experience using this for that. And is this bad like intended solely for Elon, not County Park? Oh, also at Kelly, although I do want to put a clarification. There, there's no neighbors in the vicinity of the pickleball court, but the one of my three places and the Adams of the Central Hall there, but there's a fair amount of freeway sound which is coming from Susan Park. So while we're looking at noise back in the main line to keep it, and I guess at Kelly, the idea as well, while we're doing it, even though it's not because the difficult is right. Yeah. yeah, I'm curious just what this quote is specifically for. It's various types of material. It's not necessarily the different kind of different types of material. So the material is just one. Yes. <laughs> These quotes are for noise made in the email. Most of them are things that's true. And on the existing pet sensor, or to the existing pet Do we know of any details that may be enforced? Um, I'm not even sure. But use of the noise reduction equipment is that has that been affected? We did a little bit of research on it, modeled back, but I did see that the city of Berkeley was was it, it's just a sign that says please, you know, so. That Again, it goes back to the way that it's managed. So, yeah, they do, they do ask users. So I was going to say that, I mean, the technology at the end of, I think in November, so we'll see if we hear talk from the public what the situation is, uh, you know, in, around the law is, you know, the main noise is. Um, and hopefully at that point we can see, you know, the issue it really is if it's if, the, if it was just about um but yeah it's just an issue that it, it's um i think we need to manage just because there's still only go after there's a lot of friction. i've actually heard the tennis players complaining about the noise but my response is that it's, it's my most concerned about the nearby um and you know we i'm, I'm thinking it would be good to look at Noise of reducing bats and balls. I've seen a lot of those online. I guess they use some players to um, slow it here, but again, we have to see what the public thinks right now in order to drive over noise reduction measures. Because if you go all the way to requiring noise reduced bats, but we have to make sure there's a problem. But thank, thanks for what we did that. You know, it, it came up last year. So, soon now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Any other comments? Okay. Um, moving on, we have item F3, tentative agenda calendar. Staff will make a brief presentation to begin the session. Please look up the um, agenda calendar. The next meeting is about. Third, we have a potentially tentatively presentation of um, 
from the advisory committee policy update on banners and signs, and then um, survey. Um, the November 20th, there is that date change for, to the third Wednesday of the month. Um, approve the PRC um, meeting calendar for 2025, the product user results, and then the like I mentioned, tennis with walking with the study. December 18th, the third Wednesday again, with um, joint with the uh, Library Commission, year in review, and social. And then moving on. And, to Survey and it just um, staff looked at that and said, you know, and then also do a big recreation and community program survey in the same time frame in the fall during election season when people are getting bombarded by that, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, this one, the record community program survey, it's not like super time critical to do that in the fall. So I'm um, looking at that, it's probably we didn't catch that um, in the calendar, but I just have to just mention it to the PRC. We're looking to maybe kick out into the um, after the year. So, you know, that's straight for a little bit. Thanks, Sean. Mm -hmm. um, January 22nd, um, staff presentations on community events. February 26th, um, advisory board attendance report and another advisory committee update. And then unscheduled item staff presentations on recreational programming, gymnastics, and sports, and then the parks and rec facility master plan. Ashley, do we have any public comment on this item? At this time, if you'd like to make a public comment on this item, if you can make a comment for the floor, if you're on Zoom, please notify the staff liaison by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you dial in, you can use star I to engage the raise hand function. No. Okay, uh, thank you. With that, public comment is closed, and we will open the item for permission this time. Okay, join the calendar says next month a tentative location is BHCC. I just want to, I think that's just a, a suggestion. But I guess the question is the most recent meeting at BHCC was back in May. So the idea was well, at least twice a year we want to convene this group at BHCC. I, I don't see, uh, there's not anything particular. Like, like very specific to the BHCC that's on that agenda, although it could be a lot of because of the value of the pools there. So it really just be because we want to show that we're going to be there this year. So this October, though, right now, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, you know, it's not on holidays. So, yeah, so it should be better attended than even. Yeah. The other thing is that um, the youth advisor he does the out they alternate between here and there. So. Oh. oh, yeah, it might actually be easier to look at here. So, we would hear their presentation actually on how to use these. That's good. But the agenda looks good to me. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, anyone can make a motion? Uh, a motion. Okay. Yeah. Do you need a motion on what to You can, but I think this, if there's a general request. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> okay, um, there's no comment. Um, 
Moving on to commissioner reports. Would any commissioner like to make a short report out on items of interest to the entire commission? If I may, through the vice chair, on the agenda, it is listed at item F. It is actually item G, so I don't Thank you. Actually, I have one, it's not exactly a comment, but um, one topic that has come up has been um, the use of astroturf in terms of sports fields in general. Member, another commission who shot via email to vote, I believe, Chair Joshua and myself about if we wanted to participate in that discussion. And I think it pertains to just the concerns around artificial turf and, um, you know, using that as an alternative to grass. So I think it's becoming, um, you know, a local issue, you know, just, and I think uh, another Christian wanted to discuss it. And it, it kind of, it relates exactly, directly to what we're concerned about, providing fields and amenities to residents of mental arts. They want to have thoughts. Or thoughts on wanting to participate in that service. Interesting. Um well no more. It's from people on the call who just not found it. Meters. Yeah, maybe I can follow up with uh, details on that request that was made to kind of participate in that discussion. And which which vision was it? I'll just, I'll, but I, I just know this is it, it, it's not not only an issue that's um, here in the part, but like it, it's more of the same. You know, turf has the those are pellets that okay. impact health long term, but if they balance it with just having the fields actually play. So we're just problems maintaining grass and the grounds. Yeah, interesting. So, I don't know if the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it sounds like the meditation like sharing the spoke shoots have to be mine. It might be a value to have a future representation. What the city's thought process and decision making process around the to use artificial or natural turf in various settings for the for this commission's awareness because it does seem like directly relevant. So um it that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Just a okay. So, uh, yeah, that project was uh, designated to be done mostly all this for the purpose of track citations around. Um, actually, it's already been, I think, put up to bid, and everything. It's going to happen after the new campus opened. Um, there is a delay at this point because it is dependent on. Um, some of the infrastructure work in the parking area is Kelly Park because um, there will be um, electric vehicle charging stations and solar canopies installed there. This is some of that work. I understand it has to be sequenced for that to happen before the turf replacement. With the uh, the change in seasons, it does look like that's more like a spring project as opposed to getting it done in the fall. So just wanted to give you an update about that. Um, and that one was most already been designated to be like placement official shepherds. So, if there's some interest in 
going some other direction, probably want to move it. So, shoot for your next moment. Yeah, it'll be, uh, it would be really interesting to hear about the cost it is to maintain the you know realtor. It seems like it's just watching what happens at first. It's a huge production to keep that going. So. Yeah, essentially pros and cons each. So I think it makes a perfect sense to bring it back and have a session. Yeah. And like, okay, any other comments or commissioner reports? With staff comment, which is that um, Vice Chair Lee gave an excellent city council meeting. Uh, the commission's uh, progress in their work there. And what was. All right. Uh, and then with that, the uh, meeting is adjourned. At Forty-five p.m. Yeah. 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 Yeah.